Alien Armageddon is a mod for Duke Nukem 3D which adds many new high quality enemies, sexy NPCs and a second playable character, all featured in an epic new adventure. Some of the community's best talent have come together to make this amazing free expansion. Well that's all according to Alien Armageddon's mod DB page anyway, but I have to say that all of that is pretty much spot on. And if you're looking for a new way to play Duke Nukem 3D, well this might just be the ticket. Alien Armageddon is probably one of the best mods I've ever played for Duke Nukem 3D. And in a lot of ways you can almost kind of look at it as a sort of brutal Duke Nukem 3D mod as well. For starters, it increases the amount of violence and the gore from the combat. There's new enemy types that are a lot tougher to deal with, and even the basic enemies have become more aggressive and have new attack patterns. There's minor changes to animations and sprite work, including better looking explosions and particles. And they've also added in location-based damage, so headshots will now do a lot more damage than simple body shots. And these are all modifications that Brutal Doom made to the original Doom as well. And what it also means is that the base game becomes a lot more challenging. This is a good thing. Considering that Come Get Some had become pretty much run of the mill for most Duke Nukem 3D fans, in the same way that Ultra Violence did for Doom. Oh, and yeah, this mod does include a lot of sexy NPCs. You could almost say it was a disturbingly high amount. The most unique feature of the mod, though, is the inclusion of Bombshell, or Shelly for short, who was actually supposed to be Duke Nukem's sidekick in the 1998 build of Duke Nukem Forever. There's a pretty interesting history to this character too, there's a bunch of concept art that got leaked online that shows the various designs she went through, where a lot of points she just basically looked like a porno star, with big hair and big boobs. This one right here is my favourite, I like to call it the Wet Dream Bandit. She'd eventually be refined down and changed completely and turned into Shelley Harrison, who was the main character in 2016's Bombshell, and also the upcoming Ion Maiden, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ion Fury, fuck, don't want to get sued. In this mod though, her appearance is more like her original design with a pretty big focus on her sex appeal. She's walking around in a tank top, short shorts and the thinnest looking G-string I've ever seen. And let me tell you, I've seen a lot of G-strings in my time. They don't call me G-man for nothing. She's basically just Duke Nukem in female form. She even busts out all of the same one-liners. Just instead of saying hail to the king, she says hail to the queen. To the queen, and I'm sure there's some brain dead retard somewhere ready to comment on how woke that is. Anyway, once you meet Bombshell near the end of the first level, you can swap from Duke to play as her at any time you want, with the AI controlling whichever character you're not playing as. You can issue basic commands like telling them to hold their position and to change their clothes, but that's about it. And the AI is actually pretty good at holding its own. You don't have to worry about ammunition or anything like that, you just gotta keep an eye on its health, because if they lose all their health then they get downed. Then whenever your sidekick is down, you've got to press interact to revive them, but there doesn't seem to be a limit to how many times you can do this or even any kind of penalty. Choosing to play as either Duke or Shelly only seems to decide what kind of weapons you use, and I'd wager that most people who play this mod have probably played Duke Nukem 3D more times than they've had hot meals. So playing as Shelly I think is pretty much the way to go, and she's got as many weapons as Duke, it's just they're different. For starters, she can still kick, though her leg looks a little bit nicer than Duke's, I gotta say. Then instead of Duke's pistol, she's got a Desert Eagle, which has a slower firing rate and seems to do a bit more damage. And there's also a laser pistol variant that seems to drop at random as well. Instead of Duke's shotgun, which was based off a Winchester 1300, Shelly's looks more like a Spaz 12, and it's got a slightly faster firing rate. What's also kind of cool too is that both shotguns can also use explosive ammo. Instead of Duke's chain gun cannon, she has what I think is supposed to be an R4C, but I'm not exactly a gun nut, so I could be wrong. The only thing I don't like about this one is that you have to reload it because it uses magazines, instead of being belt fed like the chain gun cannon. And that kind of sucks because like the pistol and the Desert Eagle, you're not really shown how much ammo is left in a magazine before you need to reload it, or even given the chance to manually reload either. I guess it's always been this way with Duke's pistol, so there's probably no real point to complaining about it. Now Shelly also has an RPG, but it looks like the RPG sprite from Duke Nukem 64, and this one has some kind of fire effect when it explodes, leaving behind a small ring of fire that burns for a few seconds and does extra damage. Gotta say though, I find this a lot less useful than Duke Nukem's RPG. His has a much faster firing rate and you don't have to worry about that fire effect. 
which often seems to do as much damage to you and your sidekick as it can do to the enemies. What's probably the weirdest change is what Shelly has instead of Duke's pipe bomb. Instead of that, she's got these little turret things that you throw down, then they fire on whatever happens to be in range, and also explode when they take too much damage. These are pretty useful when you're overwhelmed, it's just they suck against some of the tougher enemies, who can destroy them in a single hit most of the time. Both characters get the shrink ray, which, you know, functions as you'd expect, but instead of the expander, now you get what I guess you could call a sexy ray. One that turns enemies into naked or semi-clad women instead. Yeah, like I said before, there's just a whole lot of TNA in this game. Almost every wall and surface in the first level has some kind of poster of a naked woman or something else along those lines. And it's sad to say that I actually remember when a lot of these images were first floating around the internet. I don't even know what some of it is supposed to be, like, this thing here. What the fuck am I looking at? Still, this is a pretty fun weapon, and turning a pig cop into a bikini-clad woman is pretty humorous to see, and also sexually confusing. Right, moving on. Um, instead of the Devastator, Shelly has what looks like to be some kind of fast-firing grenade launcher. And then both characters also get a railgun that comes with a scope for long-range shots. This thing's actually pretty awesome to use and really useful in some of those larger expansive areas where you can pick off some of those alien bastards in the distance. And then lastly, instead of the freeze thrower, Shelly gets the incinerator, which uses the weapon sprite of the plasma cannon from Duke Nukem 64. This thing doesn't do a whole lot of weapon damage, but it's more the damage over time it does from the burning effect that makes it powerful. Talk about one extreme and the other two though, right? Duke's weapon freezing enemies into blocks of ice and Shelly's weapon melting them with fire. I want at one point you'll come across the plasma rifle from the Terminator films, I'm assuming in a 40 watt range, along with the same sound effect from the films when firing it, which is pretty cool. And you can even launch nukes with the RPG as well. So I mean as a weapon pack and an erection inducer, this whole thing just excels. I know I'm probably missing a whole heap of other incidental features too, but I think first and foremost the mod is a map and a weapons pack, and at least those are the things you're going to notice the most. And overall, there's really only a couple of things that pissed me off. Firstly, Alien Armageddon uses that same big old bullshit that plagues a lot of build engine games, and that's just insanely spongy hit scanning enemies. Like the mini battle lords, but even worse. <laughs> Taking on these kinds of enemies who just vaporize you from their overpowered chain gun kind of weapons just isn't fun, and it highlights some of the shoddier aspects of the shooting. The other thing is that this mod has a whole goddamn level set underwater. Yeah, an entire level set underwater called the Sunken City. I hate underwater levels on a spiritual level, I just think they're always the most unfun and unenjoyable aspects of a game. I think it started back when I was a kid playing that second act of Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. At least that's the first time I can remember hating an underwater level so much. Didn't help that that whole level was basically psychologically scarring for a young kid. Hearing what was basically the goddamn Jaws theme as Sonic slowly ran out of oxygen. Anyway, my point is don't waste my time with shitty underwater levels. I will say though that at least this one in Alien Armageddon is short, it's about as short as my patience. But still, just miss me with that shit fan. All Up The New Episode only has 5 levels. The first one is humongous and in this giant city block. The second one is another city block that's been partly submerged from flooding. The third one is that crappy underwater level. And the fourth and the fifth one are in Area 59 with the final boss fight against Dr. Proton. All of this probably won't take longer than a couple of hours or so to finish, but the cool part is that you can go back and play all the original episodes along with Shelly to help you out, which is pretty awesome. You even get these new little intro screens as well. To compensate you for having a helping hand, they've made sure that the new tougher enemy types from Alien Armageddon are thrown into the mix to make it more challenging. So if you were looking for another way to enjoy the original game and wanted to do it with a partner who looks like a porno star, well, I've got good news for you. It even works with the expansion packs, Life's a Beach and Duke It Out in DC. Sadly though, there's no nuclear winter, which isn't really a total loss, because that expansion is about as fun as catching syphilis. 
in particular, the one that it affects the most is definitely Duke It Out in DC. This kind of reminds me a bit of the Brutal Doom starter pack, where some of the new maps have had stuff added in to make them feel a lot more epic and grandiose. Now, during some of the missions when you're outside, you'll see friendly EDF soldiers that help you out in combat and get into gunfights with the aliens. As well as that, there's also new weapon upgrades for Duke's pistol and Shelly's assault rifle. Duke's chain gun cannon can also get upgraded to be a far more powerful minigun. Then there's a melee weapon in the form of a buzzsaw for Shelly and a very Evil Dead 2 inspired chainsaw for Duke. The first level of the expansion even adds in zombies, like it actually makes this episode kinda fun. Which is good considering I always felt like this expansion pack had some of the weaker level design. This whole mod is really just another example of people working on something for free because of their own passion and love for a franchise, and honestly creating something more fun and playable than what's commercially available. You'd never get away with a weapon like the Sexy Ray if you sold this game commercially, it just wouldn't swing. There'd be Polygon and Kotaku articles up within minutes. Is the mod perfect? No. Are there better mods out there? Probably. But right now, this thing right here is a whole heap of fun. And whether you're hailing to the king or the queen, Alien Armageddon is a blast.